Bacillus cereus is the next pathogen in my microbiology series. Not a whole lot to know here, so let's just power through. This is a gram-positive rod. It's spore-forming, it's heat-stable, it's catalase-positive, and it's a facultative anaerobe. It being heat-stable helps explain why human infection usually occurs through reheated food, and historically, the buzzword that people have associated this with is reheated rice. Now, less commonly, in addition to the GI symptoms that it can cause when the food gets reheated, you can also have a very dangerous eye infection, and we'll talk more about that in just a few moments. Here's an image of Bacillus cereus. You really don't need to identify this by looking at it, but here is a slightly blurry image of what this looks like. As far as virulence factors goes, there's two toxins that are responsible for the GI symptoms, enterotoxin 1 and enterotoxin 2. Enterotoxin 1 is a serialide that causes nausea and vomiting, and the time frame that you want to be on the lookout for is 30 minutes to 6 hours after ingestion. Now, brief aside here, when you're taking exams and they give you a patient who has evidence of gastroenteritis, sometimes the timeline is very helpful for differentiating potential causative pathogens. The timeline for Bacillus cereus is different than the timeline for Staph aureus, etc., etc. So 30 minutes to 6 hours is the timeline here. Enterotoxin 2 causes diarrhea and abdominal pain, and that happens about 6 to 15 hours after ingestion. Now, differentiating enterotoxin 1 from 2 is somewhat simple. Just remember that enterotoxin 2 makes you go number 2. So number two is associated with diarrhea. Number one is just nausea and vomiting. Now, most people are familiar with Bacillus cereus and the association with the GI illness. What's less commonly known, or I guess harder to memorize, is that Bacillus cereus has a very serious extra GI manifestation as well. What you want to be on the lookout for if you're going for a perfect score on your boards or you really want to impress your infectious disease attending is endophthalmitis, specifically due to penetrating ocular trauma. So something comes in and touches the eye and then you get endophthalmitis. Symptoms that you would see here would be proptosis, retinal hemorrhage, perivasculitis, and a corneal ring abscess. So obviously this is lower yield than the GI stuff, but just keep this in the back pocket if you really, really want to impress people. Here's your summary chart. Again, not a whole lot to know. Remember enterotoxin one versus two, number two makes you go number two. And then if you're really, really going for that honors on your rotation, or you want the sweet letter of recommendation from your ID attending, remember end ophthalmitis.